Good evening, it's Saturday night. Welcome to Kansas Smith. My name is Giacomo Smith. Do it again. The camera's still on me. Oh, my name's Giacomo Smith. His name's Jack Abraham. <laughs> it is Jack Abraham. Um, why are we here tonight? What's happening? We, uh, we, we played Duke Ellington's Unknown Session last week, which was uh, a really, um, for me, an interesting way to get inside his amazing musical mind. Um, mm -hmm. But you can't say the name Duke Ellington without acknowledging the presence of um, tonight's focus, uh, who's Billy Strayhorn. Right. So just place it for me. Who, who is Billy Strayhorn to Duke Ellington then? Uh, all sorts of kind of um, metaphors to say that he was kind of the other half of his, his right. musical brain. Um, he used to, I, I can't remember what the quotes are, but uh, they met in Pittsburgh, and I think Strayhorn was with Duke for like 27 years or 20. I have, I have a good anecdote for oh, that. So when yeah. he, when he, so Duke Ellington was touring, touring through Pittsburgh, and I read this like last week actually, uh, before the Ellington gig, and um, uh, Strayhorn went to watch them and then showed Ellington afterwards how he would have arranged one of the tunes. Right. I mean, that is like, that takes guts. Yeah. Right? That take, you have to know what you're about to be like, oh, here's what I would have done. Yeah, because and, and at that time, Duke Ellington was this hugely prominent voice in jazz music. And but yeah. he welcomed him. He was like, check this out, guys. You know, yeah. like, look what this kid's doing. And as you said, that relationship then lasted for the rest of Strayhorn's life. Yeah, and it was a really complicated relationship as well because um, Ellington, they, they, Ellington used to say, well, I, I'm in the spotlight because I take better bows. And um, that doesn't quite... That doesn't quite work for 25, 26, 27 years. Um, so the, the best kind of way to describe it was that Strayhorn seemed to flourish in Ellington's shadow, which is wow. a really, uh, which at times is a really difficult relationship because you know Strayhorn in his own right is was a titan uh, composer mm -hmm. and arranger and could have at any point kind of spread his wings and gone elsewhere and done other things with other people, but Ellington kind of kept hold of him and made sure that he was doing. Ellington stuff, right. um, as he did with other people as well, like Johnny Hodges and Harry Carney, and he would keep his people because he knew that they were his sound. So he would, he, he kind of has a, a manipulative side that, um, that I guess is his his kind of, yeah. But as a band leader yourself, is that something? Is that kind of like natural? I don't think I'd ever do that. No, but I mean, like <laughs> you know, when you have like a team that works, you know, you, yeah. yeah, you keep the team together at at as many you know as you know, at any cost. Yeah. But um, I think some of the things that, I think some of the psychological toll on Strayhorn was too much. And I think that at that point, there should have been some acknowledgement of, you know, having him have his independence. Right. Uh, but hey, you know, I mean, they, they made incredible work together. I mean, when we did the uh, Nutcracker back at Christmas, that was a joint uh, effort. That was one of the few times that Ellington and Strayhorn appeared on the cover of the record. You know, one of the few times, even though they worked on almost everything that we remember. I mean, Ellington's theme song, Take the A-Train, is a Billy Strayhorn composition. So when you, when you think about how much he had to do with it and how little we remember his name, that's kind of the reason that I wanted to do this concert tonight. Awesome. Um, just briefly, why, why this, talking about bands, like, why this unit? Um, the, the, my first kind of intro to Billy Strayhorn's music after hearing kind of Take the A-Train and, and Chelsea Bridge and Ellington's, you know, 40s stuff, um, was this record that Joe Henderson made in, I think, in the early 90s. I can't remember what exact year it was. And it was that era um, when people were, it was kind of the Young Lions generation in which people were coming out of, you know, the fusion era, out of the shadow of, you know, Miles Davis and that whole kind of um, push towards modernism, future, modern, 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 modern. And it was this return to, you know, um, playing bop and playing the old styles and respecting that music. It has a lot to do with Wynton Marsalis, you know, the kind of, um, the kind of classical canon of jazz, if you will, which is not necessarily something that I think is great for jazz, but it did produce a lot of great music. And Joe Henderson put together this super young band um, with Wynton Marsalis actually in it, and notably Greg Hutchinson on drums. And they did a whole um, album of Billy Strayhorn's music and kind of reinvented it into a small group setting. And it's great. So I, f I thought, well, we'll start with that as a departure point, but we won't 
we won't just play that album because there are certain tunes like one that Laura's brought called Absinthe and um, one that I want to do called Paris Blues, you know, that just weren't in that set. So we can, we can do our own um, interpretation and acknowledgement. Nice. All right. Well, settle in. Hope you're in wherever you are watching this, whether you're in the room, like all our wonderful audience here. Um, or you're back home, uh, wherever you choose to listen to this and tune in, with, I'll be in the comments section, so I look forward to hanging out with you all there. Uh, enjoy the music of Billy Strayhorn, as played by Noah Stoneman, Giacomo Smith, Ferg Island, Will Cleesby, oh, and someone else called Laura Jurds joining us in a bit. Enjoy the show.
Thank you. 
Rain Check. That's called Rain Check. Will Cleesby, Ferg Ireland, Noah Stoneman. Um, we're going to play a, uh, one of the beautiful, um, very well-known Strayhorn compositions. Uh, this is called Isfahan. It's from the Far East Suite.
that was uh, Billy Strayhorn's Isfahan. Now, um, in 1960 or 61, um, Ellington and Strayhorn were invited to take part in a, um, a film called Paris Blues, which was being filmed in Paris. And uh, Strayhorn's long-term partner lived in Paris, and it was the perfect gig for him. And he ended up writing a lot of the music for the film, but not getting credited for it. And it was a really sore point um, in in Ellington and Strayhorn's um, relationship. I think one of the most difficult periods for them. They did continue to collaborate, but I don't know if it was ever quite the same after that point. Um, and this is the theme from that movie, which is, um, I just watched it this morning, and it's definitely worth a watch. It's just on YouTube. Type it in, Paris Blues. It's starring um, Paul Newman and Sidney Poitier, and they both play um, down-and-out jazz musicians in Paris, which is kind of appropriate. <laughs> yeah, sounds like someone I know. Um, yeah, check it out. And this is, uh, this is the title track. It's called Paris Blues. Thank you. 
Thank you. Give it up. Yeah. Man, it's amazing. Um, cool. So this is the second week of June, our June program. Uh, I've just been busy in the background uh, setting up for next week's, always planning ahead. And um, But right now here in the present, it's great having all of you guys on the chat out there. It's great having all of you guys in the room with us. Uh, it's something we intend to keep on doing. Um, one of the things that's always interesting when I'm doing some research into like the artists, you know, Giacomo is, I like to think of Giacomo as like our, our zoom camera, you know, like he knows a, he'll go deep on something. I'm more like the wide angle guy, I'm trying to like look around the thing and see what else is happening. And what's always fascinating to me is the, is the stories and the, the place, the sense of place around all these artists and the time they lived in and the experiences they had. And, and when you're looking back, um, like how kind of magic it seemed that they lived surrounded by this, you know, this firmament of like other stuff that's going on. Um, and I guess, you know, it's nice to think that at some point, maybe in the future, we'll all get to look back at this last year, that even now, and go, wow, I can't believe we lived through that this time. Um, and But musically speaking, you know, this isn't about preservation. This is, you know, we're very much about making new things. And Kansas Mies and KSTV, what we've done over the last year and a half has been, you know, carrying that mindset uh, forward. Um, we, we walked away from the bar, but we wanted to keep making new things, keep making new music, keep making new friends. Um, so we need your help to keep doing that. That's where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> got there in the end. Um, so there's a PayPal link. You can check that out, support this wonderful band. There's a Patreon, which some of the beautiful people in this room are all members, the most beautiful people in this room, in case you were wondering, are all members of the Patreon. Um, that's why they look so good. And um, yeah, and that's a great way to support what we're doing. We're working towards launching a brand new venue and uh, yeah, and to keep inventing new things. And we want to be able to invite all of you guys there. To get us to that point, we need your help. We need your support. So check out those links. You can buy a t-shirt. I'm not wearing one now, but you can just imagine it. It's glorious. Um, and also, you can check out all the vinyls and CDs that we've got. You can also, if you want, come and watch the band, Kansas City's band play at the Jazz Cafe on the 30th of July. So there's loads of different ways you can get in. We're giving you lots of opportunities to get involved, um, and we, we hope you do get involved. Um, and yeah, then we get, to, we get to live in the present and look back and go like, God damn, I can't believe we did all that. Um, so yeah, thanks, enjoy the music. I'll see you soon. And now we have a very special guest that we're inviting to the stage. Um, this is Laura Jurd, give it up for her. And um, I think I, I, I've known about Laura's music for a long time, but it was a video that she posted during lockdown um, playing with Elliot Galvin, her uh, pianist in her band, incredible pianist, um, at the Vortex. And she was holding an instrument that looks an awful lot like a trumpet, but sounds slightly different. And it's, I thought, wow, can't believe she's playing cornet. And it sounds, it just instantly to me said, we have to do... We have to do something with that sound. And now we have to do something with, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, she brought the wrong one tonight, but that's okay. She's gonna stay. Um, we, we, did a gig at, uh, we did a gig last week with a kind of Chicago trad ensemble style thing with um, Dan Hyam and Joe Webb. And it was, it just, you, you know, it was such an incredible experience to hear you play that music as it will be to hear you play this music. So this is a, um, this is a tune that you suggested that's, um, on your second album, Dinosaur album? Uh, third third yeah. album, okay. Third album, uh, check it out. It's Laura's band called Dinosaur, um, but not before you hear our version. This is called Absinthe, and it was composed by none other than Billy Strayhorn. Mm-hmm. 
the trumpet. Laura Jarrett on the trumpet. Absinthe and UMMG. Thank you so much for doing that. It's a treat. Yeah, great. We may, we may, we may if, if Laura decides, we may hear from her on our final tune. But we have, one, we have two more left. Um, and uh, we're going we're gonna to kick things to the studio audience here. You can choose choice one or choice two. Or I can tell you what the songs are called, and that would be better. Um, we, we either have time for Lush Life or for Lotus Blossom. Oops, sorry. So um, we're going to do anonymous voting. Um, <laughs> oh, this is Lush Life. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm not going to say that, Will. Come on, you're, you're better than that, Will. All right, thank you very much for tuning in this evening. Uh, next week, we have a completely different setup. Um, same high caliber, totally different look. Uh, we're doing Joni Mitchell's record, Shadows and Light. Yeah, so it's to <laughs> totally different vibe. Uh, Hattie Whitehead taking the, uh, the Joni Mitchell chair there, uh, which is great to have her back involved, along with um, what I think of as Kansas Mitty's electric band now. Um, uh, Jazz Kayser, Jazz Caetano, um, Will Barry, Alec Harper. And Flo Moore on bass, of course, in the Jacko chair. All right, look, thanks for sticking with us tonight. I hope you've enjoyed the show. If you have enjoyed the show, buy a ticket. You know what to click. Uh, and we'll see you again next week. Give it up for our wonderful band, Noah Stoneman, Giacomo Smith, Ferg Island, Will Cleesby. And, and have, have they earned back? Yes, they did it. And Laura Jurd.
Thank you.